Hi, this is JP from Not A Lots Over Arkham. This is my quick review of the Sinister Motives expansion box and what I thought about the box in general. I will be talking about the scenarios and then I will talk about the heroes that come in the box, so let's get started. So the Sinister Motives expansion is definitely my favorite expansion so far, uh, speaking of the heroes that come in it, how the decks work and also how the scenarios work. So uh, let's start talking about the heroes first. Uh, I really enjoyed playing Ghost Spider when Stacy, uh, her protection deck is pretty well done for a pre-built protection deck. There are a bunch of ways to remove ward uh, or threat, so you can actually play it uh, through solo without any modifications in most of the scenarios. Some uh, scenarios in this box are quite difficult for Ghost Spider, but I think with a um, few playthroughs and uh, retries, they should be doable. And uh, uh, I really uh, like the playstyle of Ghost Spider. Uh, it reminds me a bit of uh, Quicksilver. Uh, you can ready your hero a bunch of times and do basic uh, yeah, basic stat uh, actions like uh, thwart or attack multiple times or even defend if you're playing multiplayer for example um, with some uh, uh, stat boosts like getting the attack or thwart up a bit I think Ghost Spider can be a really powerful hero to play then uh, talking about uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man, the Justice deck is a bit different than most of the previous Justice decks uh, we have seen. It really focuses on the shield keyword and uh, there are a bunch of shield allies, support and stuff like that in the deck. It needs a couple of playthroughs or, or plays to get your head around all of the combos you can do with the sealed cards. And uh, when I was playing uh, Spider-Man, I kept on <laughs> messing up with what, what to do with all of the cards and had to redo the actions because I just, after doing an action, noticed that there's a better way to do it. But I think that's a learning experience and really enjoyable. Overall, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a pretty good uh, hero altogether the deck functions pretty well and in true solo also you can dish out a decent amount of damage also uh, with with um, heroes with cards even if the uh, aspect is justice and it really focuses on the shield uh, cards uh, then uh, I haven't yet played the campaign mode. I think I will play it eventually, but for now I was only focusing on the scenario. So there, my my um, experience on the box doesn't include the campaign mode, but but uh, that's okay for me because I play uh, so many different games that I rarely have time to focus on a campaign run on Marvel Champions and I enjoy playing standalone games here and there. Starting off with Sandman. So Sandman scenario focuses on you removing the sand counters from city streets to keep the deck milling uh, to a bare minimum. Uh, the more you mill the encounter deck through when Sandman activates and damages you, uh, the faster you get uh, acceleration tokens on the uh, main scheme that will make you lose eventually to threading out even though that sandman doesn't hit that hard or the encounter deck is not that difficult. Uh, when you get um, sand counters in check then it's a, a quite, quite, 
quite easy or, or simple scenario to play and really enjoyable as the first scenario in a box. Then we have Venom. So I'm a bit biased with Venom because Venom is my uh, definitely one of my favorite uh, characters in the Marvel Universe as a hero and as a villain. And in this box, uh, a mild spoiler, he is a anti-hero, so we face him as an, a villain, but uh, he turns into an ally in the, in the campaign mode. Uh, that is when I read the resolutions, if you play the campaign mode, so you could add the Venom uh, ally that comes in the box into your deck. Uh, Venom's scenario is a really interesting one. In the scenario, Venom uh, can be handled by adding time counters onto the bell tower. So, like in the movies, you will make a lot of noise in a bell tower or somewhere where you get a, bell, a hard, really loud noise going on. So, when you damage Venom, you add time counters onto the uh, bell tower and when you get enough, depending on how many players you have, the environment flips, then you, your attacks start dealing more damage to Venom, and Venom's attacks will remove the time counters from the environment. This uh, mitigates the fact that when you hit Venom with an attack, uh, borderline that it has to be an attack, not like a random damage dealing card that isn't attack, attack uh, you get a, a boost card in front of you and when a Venom activates against you those boost cards are uh, added to the boost cards Venom uses for that attack. So if you are chipping away at Venom, Venom will get angry and will hit hard. So uh, you really want to have ways to get toughness for example and uh, or, or just hit with big hits and deal with the attacks that Venom makes some other way uh, when you don't get that many boost cards. Um, there are some nasty encounter cards that make Venom uh, hit even harder or have overkill or stuff like that, so jump blocking might uh, not be an option sometimes. And uh, of course there is an encounter set that adds some enraged symbiotes into the encounter deck, so you will be facing the same kinds of uh, symbiote cards that are in the Venom Hero Pack uh, Nemesis set. Uh, overall, I think Venom is a really good scenario. It is a bit harder than Sandman, in my opinion. Uh, in my initial playthrough, I lost Venom and had to refight uh, Venom, but uh, that was also a two-player game, so I was playing this two-player uh, off-camera when I was uh, first practicing the scenarios. Uh, I think uh, you have to time your attacks well in this scenario, and this is not that uh, heavy of a thwarting scenario as, for example, Sandman or the next scenario in stereo. So, uh, overall, a really good second scenario in the box and uh, next up we have Mysterio so Mysterio changes the game <laughs> quite a bit uh, Mysterio is really soft you can uh, hit him down really fast uh, he ha doesn't have that many hit points in, in uh, phase one and two and well I haven't played the exper expert mode yet so I'm, I don't have uh, Lot to talk about the expert mode or the basic trees. Um, in in Mysterio scenario, you are introduced with a new mechanic that you shuffle uh, encounter cards into your deck. When you draw them from your deck, uh, you will get them as uh, encounter cards face down in front of you for the next villain phase activation. You also get some effects that make uh, cards go into your uh, discard pile uh, from the encounter set or uh, encounter deck. Uh, for example, if Mysterio activates against you and uh, there is an illusion traded uh, 
another card that goes in your discard, so those will come up later. And maybe the most annoying, uh, well, not the anno most annoying, but most reoccurring uh, encounter card that goes into your uh, deck is the Deja Vu. So every time you draw it, you have to shuffle it back into your deck or into another player's deck. So there might be one player that is really good at dealing with those encounter cards and what they dish out. So you could just move those Deja Vu's over there so that player can deal with those and the rest of the team can focus on the taking down Mysterio. Overall, Mysterio scenario is a good one. Again, uh, I think it's maybe the not the, the uh, best of the box in any way. I think near near the weakest, but still a good one. So I, uh, at this point, I can say there are no bad scenarios in this box. So that is also a good thing. Nothing felt like you were being punished on playing the game. Like for example, most of the scenarios in the Galaxy most funded box. Uh, after Mysterio, uh, you get the Sinister Six. So we have Dr. Octopus, Electro, Hop Goblin, Craven the Hunter, Scorpion, and Vulture. And this functions quite similarly to the uh, Wrecking Cure scenario, but it's better by a long shot. Uh, if you don't like uh, the Wrecking Cure scenario, don't worry, this is a really good scenario. Uh, you can defeat the villains and they can come back and uh, it is not like, okay, I just defeat the villains and win. You have to have a really strong thwarting game going on to actually beat the scenario. I played this in my playthroughs with uh, Miles Morales and was really close on uh, winning the scenario through solo. But in uh, two player, when I was playing this with a friend, uh, I was playing Ghost Spider and dealing with the villains and the minions that come out and the other player was playing Spider-Man and just doing thwarting all the time and removing threat as fast as possible. So you need to thwart your way to victory in this one. So a really good change. You just can't win just by beating up the villains and the scenario altogether is really interesting and there are some nasty encounter cards that bring out the multiple of the villains at a time. So a really, really good one uh, compared to the Breaking Crew that has a similar mechanic of having multiple villains in, in, in game at the same time. Uh, lastly, we have uh, Venom Goblin, which is the last scenario of Fox. And, uh, this scenario introduces uh, multiple main schemes, so uh, we are adding threat all, onto the, all of the main schemes at the step one of the villain phase, but uh, after that we are treat only the main scheme as active that has the glider counter on it. So when Venom Goblin attacks and uh, you get, get in addition to the attack uh, to move the glider counter to the main scheme with the least amount of threat on it, then you have a choice to uh, in stage one to add threat there or result a special ability on the card. And in this scenario, if you advance two of the three main schemes, you lose. So in my uh, video playthrough, uh, I actually lost because I did a practice run uh, played this and managed to beat down Venom Goblin with the uh, Ghost Spider before one, even one of those uh, environments at, or, or main schemes advanced into the environment side. So uh, I didn't know that if you advance two of them you lose, so I lost pretty fast in that game because I advanced one, then I noticed the thing and it was too late to react to it, so the, one of the others got to advance also so uh, a really interesting scenario uh, the scenario is quite enemy heavy there are a lot of symbiote enemies that you have to deal with some have guard some may have quick strike and they get stronger if uh, any of the main schemes are advanced or there is a side scheme in play that uh, adds the symbiote 
environment into the uh, play area. So overall, uh, I think this box is definitely the best uh, campaign uh, expansion uh, out uh, at this moment for Mar Marvel Champions. And uh, I really uh, like the Mad Titan Shadow box and also the Reds. The Rise of Red School box was also an, a good one. There was in both of those there was a one one or two annoying uh, scenarios, but uh, in this one I really enjoyed playing every one of those scenarios. And also, this is a really good box to get and start playing straight out of the box. So the Ghost Spider Hero and Spider-Man Miles Morales heroes both work really well uh, two player and also really well to solo so i can highly recommend this box so hope you guys like this uh, review or quick review of the sinister motives expansion thanks for watching and until next time